Um, Michael Gregorio um, says, uh, what do mannequins eat for breakfast? Uh, and then just off to buy lights for the house. Hi, Roger. Uh, well, uh, Mike, um, what do mannequins eat for breakfast? That is an interesting question, perhaps more interesting than you uh, intended it to be, because the, uh, there is a theme in the book, which is the mannequins in, in the book are not um, the inanimate mannequins that you see in um, shop windows these days. Mannequins were the professional fashion models who were living people uh, who posed in clothes for the um, in the latest outfits for the uh, important customers who came to see them. They would have viewings of clothes, and the mannequins so were kind of uh, fashion models who worked for the department store. And um, the there is uh, perhaps evidence in in the story that one of the mannequins. Um, was uh, suffering from a form of anorexia nervosa, so um, she probably ate very little for breakfast. Um, Rosie Cole asks, does your hero breathe life into the mannequin and she comes to life like Pygmalion statue? Um, well again I think that you're thinking of the 1987 romantic comedy fantasy film starring Andrew McCarthy and Kim Cattrall called Mannequin, not my novel, so no that doesn't happen. Uh, maybe it, it would, it should have done, but it doesn't. Uh, Elaine Aldred says, "Okay, now I'm completely baffled. Monkeys, murder. Where's this from?" Uh, Elaine, it's from a book I've written called *The Mannequin House*, which um, I've invited people to send questions in about. So, um, so pay attention. That's all I can say. Uh, and then Elaine goes on to say. Um, Great, let me know when the video is out. Any book signings on the cards for Nottingham? Uh, I, no, uh, don't have any book signings on the cards for Nottingham. I, I wish I did, but I, I don't. Ruth Warburton asks, what's the best or worst thing about being a writer? Well, um, the best thing is you get to make stuff up and you're in complete control of what happens to these characters. Uh, you can uh, so you do just kind of play God, I suppose, with the lives of these characters. Um, the worst thing is, um, you know, it's it's not the most kind of stable, um, secure living in the world, but uh, we can't really complain about that. And I guess maybe you do. I do spend too much time in the company of made-up imaginary people rather than real people. So I maybe lose touch with reality a bit. I don't know. Um, pressing on, uh, someone called Quentaris, that's the only name that they give, Quentaris, Quentaris, uh, a Twitter handle, so I'm not sure who, who exactly Quentaris is, but Quentaris says, which of your characters would you have made the other sex if you wrote that book now? Um, I certainly didn't see that question coming, I don't know. Uh, which of the characters would I have made the other sex if I wrote that book now? Um, I, th I pretty much think I'm, I got all the characters the right sex. I don't know what else to say. I, it, what an extraordinary question. Um, but yeah, I'm fairly happy with the sexes that I assigned to the characters in the book. That, that, that's um, really it. Jacqueline Pye says, are any of the characters based on people you've met? Um, well, no, I'm certainly not going to admit that because that would probably get me into a lot of trouble, but it's, it's, not, it's not the case that they are. Although um, the central, one of the main characters, this guy called Benjamin Blackley, who is the head of Blackley's department store, kind of big figure in the book, very important character. Um, I, when I was researching the whole idea of, of writing a novel about um, an early department store, um, I um, came across the character of William Whiteley, Benjamin Blackley, William Whiteley, you might see there's, there's some connection in the names there. And um, there's a book by Linda Stratman called uh, Whiteley's Folly, um, which um, told the fascinating story of, of, of William Whiteley, who was uh, shot. I didn't realise this. The founder of Whiteley's department store was shot and died from his, his the, the gunshot wound in his store by someone who claimed to be his illegitimate son. So um, I'd already started researching the book, I'd already started thinking about it being a department store, 
uh, and I was interested in, in, in white lids because of the, it was a big famous store. I found out this about William Whiteley and it just, it just made me think, um, wow, and uh, that did certainly feed into um, the fictional, very fictional, Benjamin Blackley. Paul Usevich uh, asks, what hardware, software did you use to write it? Well, the hardware was my, um, I did write it on a computer, I, I, um, although I do sometimes write longhand. Uh, so the hardware was a Dell laptop, a Dell... XPS M1330. Yep, that was my son, Luke, the director, who just read that out to me, I hope you caught that. Uh, the software is just uh, mostly was Microsoft Word. Uh, I'm sorry to disappoint people with the sort of fairly obvious choice there. I did try Scrivener, which everyone had been uh, telling me about, but um, I, I, it, it was interesting working on Scrivener. It was, it, I could see the potential for developing the story, but when it actually came to writing it, um, Word just seemed to be much simpler and more straightforward. So. I hope that's answered your question there, Paul. Ben Kane, um, who, whose Twitter handle is Ben Kane Author, uh, Ben Kane says, "My daughter is three and loves dolls. Is it suitable for her?" Um, yes, Ben, it's completely suitable for her. So buy her a copy for Christmas, and um, in fact, why don't you get her a copy of all my books? They're all suitable for her. Um, you may want to check them out yourself first, though, but I'm pretty confident that a three-year-old would, would love my books. Um, and a similar thing, Asia Waterfield uh, asks, does it have any pictures? Um, well, there's a picture on the front cover, but other than that, no, sorry. Uh, the Big Green Bookshop says, well, does it? I mean, that doesn't really count as a question, does it? As, a, as your own question, just to sort of repeat someone else's question. Um, but um, yeah, so I, yeah, uh, no, it doesn't have any pictures other than the one in the cover. Um, okay, now we to get to some slightly more um, interesting questions. I think Tristan Blackwell, um, whose Twitter name is Lesbian Vampire One, uh, Tristan says, it may be a silly question, but the number seven is usually lucky, yet it appears to be ominous here. Was this intentional? I think what Tristan's referring to is the fact that the mannequin house is number seven in the street um, and so she's wondering whether uh, there was anything significant there. Um, I, I chose the number seven because um, although it is a fictional street it's based on a real street uh, near um, Kensington High Street and um, parallel to it and it was quite a short street that I had in mind and I wanted um, a street on the north side which um, I had worked out would have odd numbers and I wanted a, uh, a house that was sort of it would be pretty much in the middle of a, a, a small row so I, I sort of thought that number seven uh, would be the right number and we did used to live in a, in a number seven <coughs> house we don't now but we did used to we did for many years uh, so maybe that influenced me subconsciously and um, I just think sometimes these things, the, um, the, 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 the subconscious kind of picks these numbers for you and there isn't that much uh, conscious control but um, whether that means it's intentional or unintentional I think that's something slightly different. Another question from Quintaris um, who says, if you could introduce any historical figure fiction or non, into one of your books, who would it be and why? Well, I've already um, introduced uh, uh, some historical figures into my books. Uh, in this one there is, uh, Sir Edward Henry was actually the, um, um, the real uh, commissioner of the, the Metropolitan Police at the time of the novel, and um, also in my uh, previous series was set in St. Petersburg, Porfiry Petrovich, not a, um, a real historical figure, but uh, you could say that I could include fictional characters. He came from uh, Dostoevsky's novel Crime and Punishment, so I, I've kind of done that, and also worked the Tsar Alexander III into, into one of those books as well, or a couple of those books. So I kind of have done that, and um, I, 
I don't know really, other than that, um, um, I'm not sure.